hi everyone and welcome back so in the next set of videos i'm going to build these kind of uis the admin portal and simple authentication and uh, simple protecting the routes so for the first application there is the admin portal we are building and this is another application which we are building is the jira board okay so what we are going to do we are going to follow the same strategy we are going to explain what we are going to build we are going to build a simple authentication routes and then once user is authenticated user should be able to access the protected api routes so here there will be a two different layouts or group layouts you can say one is the authentication auth layouts and one is a dashboard layouts we are talking about nextjs 13 here so these two layouts will be divided like auth layout they are the public layouts and the dashboard layouts or the dashboard pages are the protected routes so only only logged in user with the session having managed sessions by the cookies can only be able to access so here in the auth layout we will, we will create a login register and we will show some react components to show the login form and the register form and then once user is logged in user will be redirected to the dashboard page with the, the landing page and here we are going to use the prisma it's like a jira board so we are going to have a user project and task like user is assigned to these many projects and user is doing those many tasks so i'm going to complete as much as we can okay so what we are going to do we are going to write a server components and the api routes page based api is in the next 13 so server components can directly access the prisma client and then prisma orm and the database we are going to use prisma migration prisma generate and uh, this prisma seed commands to generate to seed some data Prisma migrate is to populate the tables based on the Prisma schema. So I already have a Prisma schema which shows the relationship between the user, project and task. And when you run the Prisma migrate, it will create all those entities in the database. I have already covered my previous video using Prisma. So it should be familiar. If you are watching, the, if you have already watched that video, then this video is way more simpler. So here we are going to create a page based endpoints. These are called API endpoints in the next CS. So there is a login form. So we have a login API, register form, there is a register API, there is a project create form, project create APIs. These are the HTTP post APIs, which user will submit from the front end. So we are going to use some client side component like a login form, register form. And when you submit them, we are going to take user to the login route. Next JS login route and that login route will access the Prisma client to update the database. And once you are successfully logged in, that user that api will give you the cookies inside uh, the token and token stored inside a cookies so that now after that this client and server can exchange the data can exchange this token through the cookies so we are going to set a cookies expiry cookies http only once user logs in we will return a cookie similarly there is a registration form when you click on to register we are going to hit a register api page based api submit the data and it will create the data inside the database and will some will return 201 the, the register api also going to access the prisma client and then prisma orm so we are going to write that once user is logged in you will be landed to the home page home landing page or the project listing page and from there you can access because these are the protected routes and we need to write we need to find a logic to protect these routes so that only user request coming with the appropriate cookies our appropriate JWT tokens should be able to access. So we are going to write next JS middleware. Like in the Svelte kit, there is something called hooks. We are going to call, write next JS middleware. These protected routes will use these middleware. I mean, we will write a particular condition if user is coming to the home page or the dashboard page or the project page. Do you have a cookies? If cookies, do you have a JWT token with the uh, valid valid expiry and all these things? If yes. Okay, I will allow you to go to the pay page. Otherwise, go to the sign in page. If your token doesn't exist inside a cookies, go to sign in page. So you will come to the sign in page and then you will register, you will send a request, then you will get a cookies and your session will be established between the client and server. So this is overall symmetrical architecture. What we have is the client, client and server where the session is being managed by the cookies and these cookies will be shared between the client and the server server will be returning that that cookies post login and then that cookie we are going to send in the further api calls which we are going to make so here there are two type of api calls uh, we are doing or two type of data access 
the the server components can directly access the prisma client and if there is a, some html form you are writing and then you submit the data to the server then we can create this page based api and then this, this page based api is like a login post register post project and task will access the prisma client for us okay so here let's get started here we will start creating our group layout like auth on the dashboard inside app so here we are going to cover a lot of concepts of the next js whatever we have discussed in the previous six or seven videos here in the dashboard we have a home route these are the server components we are going to create home projects and inside auth we can create a login and register so these are the group layouts now auth folder or all or auth routes can have their own layout like uh, layout.tsx you can create inside this and similarly in the dashboard you can create a layout.tsx or loading.tsx all these files so these are the group layouts you are you have defined for these particular routes and we can have a head.tsx to define some seo settings now this is just a bare bone folder structure now inside app we can also app will have only server components outside we can create a components lib and uh, whatever the utilities helpers and this page page is also api component using this we are going to write api so it will have api folder and inside api we will put a login.ts sign in or login and register.ts forget uh, logout.ts and the project.ts these are the uh, these are the next js api endpoints we are going to create that will be able to access the Prisma and like the sign in and register once you are successfully logged in these APIs will return you the cookies or the token inside a cookies so sign in it's going to be a simple async function sign in that will accept the two parameter request and response next uh, request handler and next response handler next API request so and next API response these are the two parameters it is expecting now what we need to do what is the next thing is here we will start accessing okay request dot method is post then what we need to do is okay now the login request is coming so we need to validate if this user is valid with the email and password right uh, so what we will be doing we will be querying against the database so these are the server side apis and they have full access to the server components like the database prisma client we are using so we just need to populate the tables uh, inside our uh, Prisma database, uh, inside our Postgres database, like a user, tasks, and projects, and then through this, uh, we should be able to populate the data. So here we will just put a lib components and all. So inside lib, we, we will be able to create our database components, database.ts, and here we are going to use a Prisma client. Prisma client is nothing but uh, instance of the prisma client new equal to prisma client if you are using production instance then we will always always create a new prisma we will always use a prisma instance new prisma instance if it is a non-prod then we can even cache the prisma instance so it's prisma client and here what we are going to return is prisma client uh, of type prisma client and based on the environment we can return it so if uh, let's say what we are going to return from here is export const db equal to uh, prisma client and this prisma client is coming from currently it is undefined so we have to initialize it with the constructor so here if prisma client equal to new prisma client so this is how we can get the prisma client instance now we can just set check the environment variable if it is production then I will be creating always the new instance of it and then we will get it otherwise we can do the caching that I checked in the Prisma documentation that uh, if your environment is not actually cache it using global dot cache prisma equal to new prisma client and even before creating this instance we can check if global dot uh, cache prisma is already there then just return it otherwise uh, create a new instance and assign it so here we can add a simple condition for that so it is just only some local optimization we are doing for the local development 
it is there otherwise we can just return prisma client equal to global dot uh, prisma client cache prisma client okay so this is actually lib database.ps and we are going to get the reference of database from this file and here we can see here we are doing a login so we can do the login only if we have a database setup already like the docker container is running for the postgres the uh, schema migration has already been done we have already written the prisma schema and when you do the migrate and generate it will create a type definitions inside using prisma client so what we need to do is here we are calling all these uh, methods user dot find unique find many and all but how that is happening we have to generate all the entities like user tasks and projects and then we have to do npm run generate or npm run migrate to create a database entities in the tables so here is our uh, schema dot prisma what is schema dot prisma i mean it's like existing definition i have from my template here we have a project entity uh, let's get some extension downloaded So here we can see the nice and clean view of the Prisma schema. Provider is a Prisma client JS, and this database is uh, provider is a PostgreSQL and a URL is database URL which is coming from anonymous and variable. And the user has the projects and tasks, and the project has the owner ID as a reference key of a user, and task has a two reference key as a project ID and the owner ID. This is how we are going to associate. So you can add a unique key constraint, you can add an index and you can you can see here in the task we have a two foreign key or you can say two relationship owner id and the project id and there is a task status of type enum not started started when you do prisma generate it actually creates the models prisma generate and prisma migrate prisma generate will create a model say using the prisma client library which is inside node modules and when you do prisma generate migrate sorry migrate means database migration it will just check okay this is the these are the models you have so it will just uh, create those tables according to the models you have defined in the prisma schema file here we have all these commands npm run generate so it will create a prisma client we need to switch the version p16.18.0 and we need to switch to the just to npm run migrate so this is the database url we need to check if database url is correct pokemon okay, app okay first of all we need to have a database also there right so for the database we need to have a some kind of a docker containers running our database so what we will do is we will do a simple docker setup using docker compose file let's do that so here is our docker compose file here we can change the database name and we will do docker compose up i have shown this thing in my almost every uh, video how to spin up the container we have both the yml file i will do docker compose up that will give me this container i will remove if there is existing container on the same port and docker compose up that will give me this container with this database which i want to have and then i will do the, again the same command npm run migrate so first of all i need to switch to the command npm run migrate first of all generate is already there migrate so you can see it has executed this migration sql uh, this migration sql has been generated and migration has been executed based on the schema model here you can see user table project table and the task table and this uh, now we have defined all the reference keys like unique key constraint a primary key foreign key constraint inside a project as a user and inside a task we have a two foreign key uh, task uh, owner id and task project id so there are three tables project has a user reference task has a reference of a project and a user once you define these models inside a prisma schema creating the entities and defining the nested models typescript models is happening automatically through this generate command so this is our database in table plus we can see our user table task table and the project table in the div database we have created now we can we have the database we can start accessing the prisma client because now we have the actual database already created and we are writing a login api endpoint so what we will do is db.user 
we all so this is how we can check find unique where email equal to this if we got the user that means user exist with this email now we can start talking about comparing the password and comparing the password is the same thing you when, when while registering you will create a hash code hash version of the password and while doing the login you will compare using bcrypt.js so bcrypt.js provides a compare and dot hash functions dot hash functions to create a hash password dot compare to compare the hash password with the text password i have covered this kind of stuff in most of the videos here we are doing going to do compare password if we got the user object from the table and we have two passwords one is the password coming from the apis another is with password which is already there in the database and we will define this compare password method in our uh, maybe inside a lib folder we can create auth so and all these things lib component you can access directly through the url at the rate component at the rate lib so it's easy to put things inside a lib because this is not part of a component this is just like some utility functions you are going to call so compare password here we are going to use a bcrypt js or the bcrypt library to compare the text value pass okay so what we are doing is bcrypt.compare i will import the bcrypt first bcrypt from bcrypt and then bcrypt.compare we will pass the plain text password and the hash password that's it so this function we are calling from the sign in api and we will import this and you can see it is importing with the at the rate lib because it's like uh, we are not in, putting dot 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 forward slash something like that whatever you are putting in the lib and components can be imported like this if user is there after comparing the password that means now we can generate the token with the user payload we have received otherwise we can just throw an error saying that user your email and password is not correct so here we are going to write a function create jwt token how we create a token that's we are can define inside a library create jwt token for this user so when we create a token we always put some payload inside it so that while decoding the token we can get who is the user that token belongs to who is the user id who is the email so here we are writing create token method and these types all these types we can get from the prisma like user entity task and project and here create so here we are creating a what is the expiry of the token so we just added a current uh, timestamp plus uh, seven days okay that is the expiry that we are passing and now we can pass this expiry to while we generate the token okay so how we are generating we can just do a sign jwt method which is coming from jaws or there is another library json web token there are different libraries to do the same thing json web token that also provide a sign and verify method here we are do using jaws which is also doing the same thing sign jwt it uh, gives you all these options to pass and here we will pass all the arguments it needed there is like a payload what we are going to put inside the token and then uh, all the what is the signing algorithm we are using what is the payload we are putting what is the expiry we are putting so we are putting only two properties in the payload id and the email okay and now this is our token now what else we can add we will just set a expiration time the expiration and uh, we'll put us assign a secret also because while creating the token we have to pass some secret also uh, we are doing the signing of this token with the help of this jwt secret which we are getting from the environments so we will create an environment variable somewhere inside a lib maybe environment.ts so all the runtime environment variable which we are getting from process.env we can put that inside environment.ts so here we can uh, put all the environments which we are using across the application like database url jwt secret and jwt token and uh, now we are coming to the sign in here we can import this method uh, okay so and this is generating the token we need to return this we are already returning this we can also send the because this is not accepting as just a string what we can do is we can just encode it encoder dot encode and uh, this is how we are creating jwt token and we are already returning the sign jwt 
in this auth.ts you can have multiple methods like uh, validate jwt token sign jwt token and uh, compare password or create hash password all these methods are which belongs to simple authentication creating an encrypted token comparing the pa password creating jwt token validating jwt token uh, all these things so here we are going to do is validate jwt token so jwt verify we are going to use jwt verify and we will pass the token and the secret using which we actually created this token so you can see the text encoder dot encode jwt secret so here we are going to return payload dot payload because we are setting payload inside a jwt token while creating it so payload will give us what is inside a token which contains the id and the email we have everything so now whoever is whenever we are decoding we will get who is the user with the id and the email and that information we can use on across all different apis because we are going to set the cookies with this JWT token once the request is coming to the protected APIs we will decode these cookies and we will get who is the user, who is the user ID and who is the user email so here uh, we are doing login so once the to token has been created we, we are going to do is response.set header and set header is like nothing but setting the cookies by serializing the cookies and we can choose a cookie name and then we can set the value for it so response.set header set cookies serialize and it takes a uh, different parameters like what is the cookie name what is the cookie value and what are the cookies options jwt cookie name and these are the options http only is true what is the path of the cookie and what is the maximum age of the cookies these are some of the parameters uh, to, to to secure the cookies like to prevent the access uh, access of access s To prevent the XSS attack and any kind of attack to steal your cookies and impersonate you all those kind of things we can stop from here and then if uh, the request is not post we will send a bad request response.status200.end dot dot so this is a simple login which we are calling sign in so we can access it using API sign in similarly there is a register we can just copy this code and to post it to register here instead of uh, email password we are going to get uh, email password first name last name and here we are just going to use the db dot user dot create api call and we'll just uh, pass this whole payload same code we are just using request and response inside request we will get uh, in from the request dot body we will get a uh, first name and last name email and password now we need to create a payload to create a user payload is nothing but a payload which contains the email password your first name and last name and then we can just call await db dot user dot create first of all we need to hash the password so this is how we are creating a hash password and then we'll just do hash password and password with the value both the variables are same so we'll just change one of this let's say the coded password or and hash password we can import now uh, we have all these attributes we can also do some validations like uh, you are passing all these parameters or not otherwise we have to do the validation at the client side in the form that all these four attributes are required to create a user in the database now you can just do await db.user and just pass all the parameters so it will create a user in the database and we'll just send a status code 201 with empty response that means user has been created and we can redirect the user to the sign in page so that he can fill the same email and the same password okay so similarly we have another endpoints like logout and projects so project is important because project is something which is happening after you are already logged in right uh, so what we are going to do here is first of all we always need to validate if user is uh, user does exist in the cookies because at the API level we are going to get the currently logged in user because we are creating a project I'm going to create a project for the current logged in user so we always need to know who is the 
current login user and for that we will be just calling this validate jwt token and we can get it from the request dot cookies okay so validate jwt token will give me okay which is the user if user is null that means uh, you are not authorized you can send a 401 or a bad request 401 should be good status false otherwise if user exists in the token we can just do is await db dot project dot create and here we can pass the data object inside a prisma create command the name of the project and the owner id of the project so there is another argument is owner id that we can pass through user dot id that's it and here you can see it is returning the payload and this is how we can get the user object and we can also return the response return sorry response.json uh, data equal to message okay or something you can even return the the project object returned from prisma this is simply logout and what logout will do actually it's not get or post it should be simply get and what logout will do is it will set the cookies max age to the minus one logout can just delete the session from somewhere if you are persisting the session or here it is only cookies based so you just expire the cookie with the current jwt token that should do the job uh, response dot set header we already have this syntax somewhere we can copy it and just set the max age to the minus one here we need to get the jwt from uh, cookies so const jwt equal to request dot cookies uh, jwt cookie name and this jwt we can pass and here the max age is minus one response dot json so this is simple logout so now we have all the four apis sign in register project and logout right now these apis who is going to call your front end components like uh, server components already has access to fetch the data through prisma client but when we are writing react uh, client side components like the sign in form register form or the project list if components they don't have access so you will be calling this page endpoints through those components like inside a use effect you will call this or uh, client side components also do use can use this use hook provided by react uh, next js 13 use hook to make a api call inside a component so what we are doing here is now we have this next middleware we are going to build what this middleware does let's say you are logged in you got the token and you started accessing the api endpoints but what we want is every request should go through this middleware so if you are hitting the login and register i will check no session exists let them access login and register if you are accessing the home no session exists redirect them to the login if you are going to the home your session exists let them allow to publish home page or the the project list page all those validation will be putting in this next js middleware that is important piece of information here we are going to access the request object inside a request object we can access the cookies and from the cookies we can get the jwt token and validate the jwt token expiry if this token is expired or valid so we are getting the path name from the next url and based on this path name we will be executing different different things okay you are going to this path public path i'm okay if you are going to the protected path i'm not okay i'm going to check your session so starts with a couple of public routes which for those we don't need to check the session that we can just copy and paste it can be a static path api path and public path that should be allowed without checking the session these are like we are going to bypass if the routes are coming through this because this is middleware and this will intercept all the requests so we need to bypass these special calls if path name is login if path name is forward slash take the user to the home page so we, we are just overriding the next url request dot next url dot path name is home and then return uh, next uh, response dot redirect to this next url which we have set request dot next url it is simple and then if uh, your url name check if user is already logged in and he is trying to access the login and register apis register page how we can check the active session we can get the uh, 
token from the cookies cookies dot values and then we will validate okay token is valid token is not expired that means user of active session already exists so if you are accessing the login or registry API endpoints we need to check do you have active session yes then i will take you to the home page if you don't have active session then you can happily go to the login or the register route here we can get a request dot cookies dot uh, jwt token i think we need to use request dot cookies dot get here and just pass the cookie name because this is the request object and here if the cookies doesn't exist then i'm fine i will just allow you to go to the login and register phase if does cookies exist then i need to validate if your cookie is valid through the method i have defined inside auth like validate jwt token so verify your validate there is some method which we have already created inside auth.ts await validate jwt token and jwt you can pass we need to import this okay so if this is fine like if we got the token valid then request dot next url path name equal to home page because you have active session and you are trying to access login not allowed you need to go to the home page then we are fine so we will just override the next url dot path name and we can simply say is a next response dot redirect to that path name if there is any error then i will redirect you to the current page whatever you are i mean i will allow you to go to the login and register page i don't have any issue if any error occurred or, or there are other conditions you can put let's say if your path name is not matching to above conditions it's like you are trying to hit the protected apis like home page you are trying to hit or uh, dashboard page or the project listing page you are trying to access in that case none of the above condition is matching it's a simple we have to validate the token coming inside a cookies if jwt is not there then you, i will take you to the home page instead of that i will take you to the login page so here we are doing validate token if uh, route doesn't doesn't match with the above condition obviously you are accessing protected api route we will get the token from the cookies and we will validate the if the token is valid then only allow you to access it otherwise take you to the sign in page it's like a simple validation but what is the role of this middleware this is like interceptor intercept all the request it's like express middleware registered to all the routes it is middleware.ts then it is going to intercept and validate you so let's say if you logged in successfully it will take you to the home page if you are already on the home page and if you reload the page then it will keep you on the home page if your cookie somehow gets deleted and you are on the home page if you reload it then it will take you to the sign in page all those basic things of redirections and validations are we are doing inside this middleware so what do we have now we have actually created we need to build the login component or a login form sign up form which where we need to do the form validation so you can use a form make you can use any react hook forms and all all, all these libraries to write a forms and then when you do the handle submit you are going to make an api call which is like we are going to write a simple fetcher fetcher is just like a wrapper on top of fetch module that we are going to write in the api inside a lib and that will going to, that is going to call and send the payload to the api endpoints and where in those api endpoints we have already defined a sign in register projects and logout routes right so it will call the prisma already calling them like uh, you can see here inside lib we are going to create api.ts what it will do is here we are going to create a wrapper on top of fetch a simple fetcher fetcher function is going to use the fetch module only the client side fetch to make api request it takes a url method body and all so we are just writing on top of that and we are going to define some typescript definitions fetch params like what all properties you can pass to the fetch so here we will we are defining a fetch params and that is like url method inside body and uh, all these parameters we are going to define method is of type string method is of type string which can be post and get uh, fixed types and body body can be of type there are multiple types because we have fixed 
types we share project create import user create import so body can have only these file payloads defined here so api request body what all apis we have we have a task we have a project we have a user and we have a create task so create user input is already defined pre prisma dot create user input similarly prisma dot create project data or project input so these types are already defined and so that, that is just for uh, adding typings otherwise it should be any ideally because you can pass anything in the body it's not limited to some defined payload and then uh, we will have a uh, fetch params and uh, in fact fetch params the last argument is json if it is json is true or false it's a boolean now we are going to pass all these parameters like url method body and the json and then this fetch a fetcher is going to use simple fetch modules await fetch url method body and all const response equal to await fetch, await fetch pass the url and inside this object we'll pass the method and uh, we can pass couple of arguments like body and then uh, the, if body is there then stringify the body and then we have other arguments like headers inside header you can accept application json and content type is application json so here it's like a config object for the http request in xuse also it looks like same url method data headers so either you can use xeos or you can use fetch which is the client side library you don't need to include any independent module so here if we are checking if response is there if response is not okay not there that means we need to throw an error the api has failed otherwise we will just return uh, response.json if you are passing json that means if you are passing this json attribute which is of type uh, true by default then just return response.json and define other api endpoints like uh, register login project get all projects mm -hmm. and they are going to use this fetcher module to get the data so let's say register here the user will be of type prisma.create user input and we are going to pass this user inside the payload of this http post api endpoint so fetcher here we are going to pass the whole payload here, let's say url is api register or sign up based on whatever is defined here it's a register here so it's an api register and method is post and you can see the body is we have we already have a user object and then json is false so url is of type string okay i think we did some mistake here this is of type string not of type type string Similarly, we can define the register, login, and create a project. We just need to change this payload or property and the API endpoint inside a URL. And that will do the job. Sign in. Here it is a login. Here it is register. Similarly, you can create another API endpoint which is like export const create project. So here you will change the URL method will be post. All these things you can pass like create project it's like a project data you are passing and type is partial of uh, prisma.create project and inside body we are passing this data okay so this is like uh, some part of this thing is ready what we need to do we need to use this uh, api api library to send api calls to next js apis so that they can do the insert update delete inside of prisma now let's write some server component because once user is logged in we are going to land on the landing page so those server component will directly have an access to the prisma right because the project list task list uh, or the get user details they all have access to the prisma client because you are writing a server component like get login user detail get all projects get all task of a, of a project all these things can access prisma clients and you can fetch the data directly so what we are going to do is here we are going to define page.tsx loading.tsx so we will start writing some front end side components server components export const greeting so once you log in we will just say hello username you are already successfully logged in and this is your profile you will start interacting this is a kind of message so here uh, we are going to write a simple async a simple component 
so that component should return us some greetings so it's a, like a simple component but it is going to call some asynchronous components inside it and then we then we can use suspense and loading suspense find fallback okay so the greetings component like greetings component we can define inside a components this this is how we can create a components and we can directly access them using at the rate component at the rate lib and this is the greetings what it is greeting greeting is just a component which is going to fetch the user details based on the current session cookies so it's like a sync component here fetch the login user details so how we are going to get the token first based on that we can get the data this is a server component so we are going to call get user details and inside lib we can create a server based logic server library logic server side whatever we are going to do we'll put inside it this so here we are just it's like a utility we are putting some server side stuff which is going to access the prisma directly here we can just do await uh, db first of all we will get a cookies because uh, we need to know who is the current logged in user so for that uh, we can just uh, get user from cookies this is the function we are going to write this is accepting a cookies and what it will do is it will just give you first a jwt token from cookies cookies dot get the cookie you got a J the jwt token and then inside this token you can just do validate jwt token this will give you the jwt payload once you have payload that means you have id and email id of a user then you can simply say is await db dot you just need to import db here from database and then you can simply do is a db dot user dot find unique and based on this id where id is this and you will return a user so this is how get user from cookies you have the cookies i will give you the user and you'll just import it get user from cookies and the, here we can get the cookies from the next and here we'll call it so this is how we can get the user details and this function we can call inside our server components okay and we are returning the user so this is get user details we'll import it this is how we are getting a user detail so now this is your greetings component which we are importing inside a server component this is a synchronous component once you have the user details available you just print you get the user dot first name last name email and just say greetings okay hi user you are currently logged in this is your current user credentials user details and you can do a logout you can create user create task of a particular project all those stuffs you can do now here we can create a project id and the project layouts project id means uh, nested projects where you wanted to just deal with the individual project and its task then another page will be the project list so here we are doing a project page inside project page. so here we are doing get all project this is also server components and we will define this method get all projects inside our uh, lib server side and through that method we are going to just call the prisma client and from the prisma client we can get all so here we are saying seeing that how do you fetch the project details first you need to know your own user because you have only cookies cookies that contains your session so you will get a user and then you are passing that user as an owner id to all the projects so give me all the projects where i am the owner id and i am the current logged in user so you will get all the projects which has been created by you okay so this is how you will write another uh, helper function inside your lib and this thing you can call from your components okay give me all the project details give me all the project data get me give me all the projects list details give get, get project data here we are passing the id so here I'm interested only in getting a single project data. So we are already getting a user details. So just like changing the query inside the project table, we will just pass the user ID and the project ID. Okay, give me the project details where I am the owner ID and this is the project ID. That's it also and also give me the relation data which is task. So I want you to fetch a particular project and all the associated tasks to it. 
so that we can just show those on the task card or some kind of a comp card component so you, you will see an individual project, project details and all its tasks which has been created with the, the timelines and the description and all. This is what we can do. So this is a simple list get all projects. So now another thing is inside this ID, we are creating just thinking and creating these components, space.tsx. This space.tsx will talk about only a single project. So we are going to pass this ID as a path params and that that path param we can access inside this project using params dot so we are going to define the props for this inside the the props we are passing params object which is having the id so get project data and we are passing params dot id and uh, this project data if this project data is there then we are good otherwise return null if we are getting the project data then we have the tasks also so you can create a task list component and the project detail component all these components i'm not going to go into the inside the react components uh, how we are building it we are just passing that as a props and then react component can take care of visualizing the data how how the css and uh, jsx look like so this is the task list component we are so here we are creating a types task card props uh, tasks are type of tasks array and these types we are getting from the prisma client and this is the data so we can get either task or either we are getting the task from the parent component or you can get the get task card data i mean this is a server component so asynchronous server component so you can have you do have access to the prisma here directly so here we are just doing get user from cookies you get the user data and once you have the user data you can uh, use this user data to get a tasks information away db dot tasks dot dot find many and uh, find many based on what criteria owner id owner id is the current logged in user for that i will just pass the task and where uh, status is not completed okay i mean i just need a and deleted is false this, this is how we write a where close in the prisma query and only give me only five records order by due date which is ascending order so i will get all the tasks and i will return it once i have a task i will just iterate on to those tasks in the task list component and i will show them so this greetings greeting greetings is asynchronous component right here we are just fetching the data so we need to we can wrap this greetings inside a suspense block so that uh, we can have this asynchronous fallback fallback mechanism already in place so inside a fallback, we can pass a fallback skeleton component or some loading text, loading skeleton or any kind of component, custom component you can build and that will do the task. So now we have a lot of uh, things already created, this particular middleware that is important piece, all the API endpoints, logout, project, register, sign in and some React components. Those forms you can create in any pages now let's see the demo like how once you are doing a sign in how we are getting the cookies and how we are sending that cookies once we are landed to the load, uh, landing page home page and when you are deleting the cookies how we are redirecting to the sign in page because the session doesn't exist this middleware will redirect you to the login page and when you do the logout it will automatically redirect you to the login page because your cookies max age is minus one once you are doing login successfully you are we are setting the cookies which has its value and it's a valid cookies so you should be able to redirect on the home page because you have active session let's see the demo so this is my simple login page and a sign up page i can just do a simple sign up by just passing the email and the password i have these some simple dummy components i have created a login and sign up for the demo when you do a create new account i can do a simple registration and it is taking me to the sign in page because my session doesn't exist i will pass the same email id and a password and click on sign in what it will do is it is going to hit the sign in api and give me the cookies back and here you can see i got the cookies set cookies with the xxx this is the value http only and a path and i can see the cookies values also now what is the next thing we are checking is once the you are able to log in we redirected to the home page right 
where we are just seeing the greetings component okay uh, these are your projects check your details and all this is the cookies data we have set and this is the cookie name once you delete this cookie and try to reload it will take you to the login page because next yes middleware is doing all those things of validating the cookies validating the token extracting the user data from the token and checking if user is active or not so if you delete the cookies we are redirected to the login page again so this is how it is working it's like a basic session management in the next years using cookies now today in the today's world there are 10 different ways of doing uh, authentication using username email password using social providers and all but this is a simple demo which talks about how we are doing it with a simple username password and how we are setting the cookies values from the server and then how we are protecting the routes through the middleware this completes our whole demo i will put this code inside the github so you can also take a look by running this locally it contains the prisma migrations you need to have a table so you need to be connected to the database because your apis are dependent on the prisma database and this is how we are setting the cookies uh, on the sign out this is how we are populating the environment variables this is how we are writing middlewares docker docker compose yml files this is all this is like the complete summary of uh, what we are doing and what we have achieved at the end after doing all those things so this summarizes a lot of concepts of the next years after this we are going to create simple admin portal to see the layouts only but most of the next year stuff i have already covered uh, in this video the additional thing we have talked about is the middleware how we are protecting the routes how we are managing the sessions how we are passing the data all those concepts how we are writing a server components client components handling the form validations that is your stuff i mean that's a client side and i i don't like writing much of html and designing part that you can fill in okay thanks everyone